we're gonna do, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what I've done already. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. Can you read it now? There. <laughs> okay, so here has, here's what I've started with. This is a 10 by 10 canvas. Don't worry about the details because I'm gonna give all of those to you at the end of our five days of lives. You'll have one great big PDF file with all the tracers and all the colors for all five days. So don't stress about the details right now, but this is a 10 by 10 gallery wrapped canvas. And what I've done is taken the Anita's white and I covered my entire canvas. Then I put one blob of the uh, Americana Hauser light green, same green we've used all week or yesterday, trying to keep trying to keep it all in the same color family so you don't have to buy dozens of different colors. So I took a blob of that and I just used my brush and smushed it all together. And then I took the plastic We'll pretend that this glove is the plastic. I took the plastic from the wrapper of the canvas and did this. I just pounced in all the color so it's kind of a mottled green, white-ish look. So I'll give you a little close up of that. So it just is mostly white with a touch of green just to have a little something special on the background. Now, here is what I did next. After my paint dried, I want to make a wreath, okay? And I'm going to make it kind of like a grapevine wreath. And then we're going to add some of these green things all the way around and some berries. So what I did was I took my plates and put it in the center. Then I used a pen. This is one of those graphic pens. It just so happens to be brown, but you can use a watercolor pencil or whatever, even just a regular pencil. And I just traced my paper plate all the way around. Hello, Marie. Yeah, that was Zima. <laughs> Jeannie, you're so crazy. So I traced my nice circle all the way around, and we're gonna use that as kind of the guideline for our wreath once we get to that point. Now, we are gonna, before we start with the wreath, we're gonna put the word Mary in the center of our wreath and we're gonna trace it. Already did, already cheated, so it wouldn't take three days. Hey, Dottie. Trace it with the tracing paper and your stylus, or if you just if you don't have a stylus, you can just use a pen or a pencil, just something pointy, so that you can trace it. So what I did was take my uh, Mary, and you'll get the Mary. I'm gonna turn it where you can see it. You'll get this in the PDF. So you're gonna take your Mary, center it. I taped it down. Stick your tracing paper underneath and use your stylus or a pencil or something to trace your letters onto your canvas. Got that? Okay, let me put this aside. Hey, Miss Janice. Long time no see, girlfriend. So now you can see, I know it's backwards to you, but I have the word Mary traced on my canvas. So the first thing we're gonna do because once we, get our, once we get our leaves and berries around here, we won't be able to do the Mary. It'll be too hard. So we're gonna do our Mary first. Thank you for sprinkling, Deborah. I appreciate you so much. And I'll tell you what. Keep, everybody who sprinkles, their name will go in the hat. And at the end of the week, we'll draw a name and we will give you this. We will ship you this lovely, fancy, million dollar evergreen ornament piece. How about that? Sprinkle away, sisters. We'll draw somebody on Saturday. How about that? Sprinkle, 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 sprinkle. Share the love. Okay, so what I did was I took three or four of my reds. Let me know you sprinkled so I could put your name in the hat. 
So sprinkle, then tell me you sprinkle. It is cold here too, Deborah. When I got up this morning, it was 31 degrees. I was not pleased. I was not pleased at all. Thank God for seat warmers. Yay for all the sprinkles. So what I did after I traced my word Mary onto my canvas is I started going through all my reds to find just the right red for our Christmas Mary because I wanted it to be nice and bright. Look at all you sprinklers. I wanted it to be nice and bright, but I also wanted, yes, tell me you sprinkled. I also wanted to, I wanted it to be opaque enough that we didn't have to do it a hundred times, okay? Because red is crazy. A lot of times it takes multiple coats to get red. Look at all the sprinkle, sprinkle tinkles. It's how exciting. A lot of times you have to do red multiple times just to get a nice coat. So I wanted to check that out. And the winner was Anita's Rojo Verde, True Red. <laughs> hey, Heidi, how are you? That's Heat Wave. It was 18. Oh, my God. You're in Chicago, right, Rima? Screw that. No, ma'am. I'm a Southern girl. Thank you, Andrea. Oh, somebody tell Judy what sprinkling means. It means blessing the page. Do you know what sprinkling, what blessing the page means, Judy? <laughs> okay, so the winner is the Anita's uh, True Red. Yes, Rima gave you a clue. <laughs> so we're going to use the True Red. It is a really nice Christmassy red. See how red it is? Nice and Christmassy. And we're gonna go ahead and get started. I am going to use, let me see, a very small, can you see how small that is? I don't wanna use a round because it doesn't get a lot of coverage, but this is a quarter inch flat. Can you see how small that is? It's pretty small. So I'll be able to use it sideways and flat to get all my areas covered. Hey Gladys, good to see you too. Okay, so let's get this party started, how about? You have now blessed the page, thank you Miss Judy. Judy's my aunt, guys. I know I probably have told you that before, but I'm telling you again, that's my auntie. So, I'm gonna get some of the debris off here. I'm gonna wet my brush, you can see all the things. I'm gonna get some of that water out and I'm just gonna start. You can see I have traced it kind of fat. So basically, I'm just gonna color in the lines. I'm gonna use my tiny little brush. Hey, Brenda. Uh, Jean, that's gonna be at the end of the week after all five lives, you're gonna get everything in one big PDF, okay? So I am just gonna take my brush, get into my red, and I'm gonna start coloring in the lines. So I'm just gonna start, I have to hold my breath, hang on. I have to go slow and I have to be a little bit quiet. My hands are great this week. I haven't had a lot of arthritis problems, but we don't wanna make a mess. So I'm gonna try to do this without totally messing it up. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna get all the colors and all of the tracers at the end of the week so I can just do it one time. So let me see, okay, I gotta do this. Uh, so I am just filling in the lines. Ooh, I got a little fat outside the lines there. That's okay, Jean. Uh, Deborah, uh, explain available. You mean the PDF? It's gonna all be together. So I gotta be a little quieter because I'm getting way outside my lines. <laughs> I hear you, Pat. I, sometimes I have that problem too, honey. <laughs> I have to be quiet, y'all. I'm gonna make a mess if y'all don't stop. <laughs> I'm using a, a quarter inch flat. That way I can use it on its side 
for pointy, slim situations. And I can use it flat for fatter pieces. So I, I all right guys, I gotta pay attention to what I'm doing or I'm gonna have a mess. <laughs> uh, this shirt is a Stitch Fix, Connie, and I do not have my apron, shame on me. Uh, I should with all this red, but you know, if I get red on my shirt, it'll just match everything else in my closet that has paint on it. So I'm gonna be really careful and try hard not to get paint on it. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna keep going. If I get really quiet, y'all talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> yeah, it's a quarter inch flat. It is tricky business. Quarter inch flat. And surprisingly, my hands aren't as shaky as normal. Um, normally, when it starts getting cold, I'm going to turn this a little. Normally, when it starts getting cold, my arthritis really starts kicking up. And that's when my hands get shaky. See, I shook right then. Had a little shaky moment right then. Just because I said it wasn't. <laughs> Not every class, yay, but site said it was down when I was setting username. Elizabeth, I did see your email pop up just as I was going live. Uh, when we're done here, I will get with you and we'll have Christy fix that for us. So don't worry. Christy's our girl. Christy is the fixer of all things. All right. So notice I'm loading my brush often, and I also forgot to tell you that this paint that, I use, that I'm using, the True Red, it's a little thicker than I liked, so I did add a little bit of water to it, so it would, not much, because you'll dilute it too much and it will um, be too transparent, but I put just a couple of drops of water in it just to loosen it up so it would, uh, it would spread nicely. You need to look at this. I don't know what this is. Y'all keep distracting me from the job at hand. I'll be on here all night. So just so y'all know, remember last night when Manly said uh, he was protecting the wine from the wine thieves? Well, he lied. When I got home, there was enough wine in the bottle for maybe one of those cheap ass restaurant pours. You know what I'm talking about? When they pour you like an inch and a half of wine in a bottle that will hold a gallon or in a glass that'll hold a gallon. Hey, Inga, where you been, pumpkin? Yeah, that's about how much wine I had, so I didn't even drink it. I was like, you are messing with me. I don't think I'm gonna drink an inch of wine so he totally drank the entire bottle of wine. Of course, he was asleep five minutes after I got home. Oh, heathen. So I am just coloring in the lines, guys. Coloring in the lines very slowly. <laughs> very slowly. So I don't make a boo-boo. Well, there was only the one, Jean, Joan, sorry. There was only the one, so that wasn't even a possibility. So I was like, gee, thanks, dude. He didn't care. He was about half drunk and half asleep by the time I got there. He was just like, hoo, 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 hoo. So even smacking him around wouldn't have done any good. He wouldn't have felt it. <laughs> Drinks and thimbles. <laughs> yeah, honey, the honeymoon is over. When you start drinking all the wine and not leaving me none, the honeymoon is over. All right, I'm going to turn my canvas. I'm going to just continue to turn it. I don't know if you guys do this. Uh, turn your canvas as you need to because, you know, that's how it is. I turn mine all the time. It's, it, even when I'm doing a great big canvas, Sometimes I'll turn it upside down just so you can get at the good parts. Ooh. 
<gasps> that would make a good live, Rima. You got, now you're talking. I need to keep that in mind. Yeah, I hold my breath right here in that little tight spot. Oh, goodness gracious. This is going to take a hot minute, isn't it? The good, the good news is after this, it's going to go pretty fast. So hopefully we won't be here till 10. <laughs> Just log out and come back in 10 minutes when this red's done. We're almost there. We're on the E. Uh, Sherry, that man ain't ever seen a glass of wine he didn't like, so that ain't working. Never. When I first met him, he didn't really drink wine. I was, I've always been a little bit of a wino, and he didn't really drink wine. He's mostly a vodka drinker, or he does like some beer. Um, in the summer, and he didn't start drinking wine until I started having wine in the house all the time. And then he was like, hmm, maybe we should give this a try. Apparently, he liked it. Are you holding your breath for me? <laughs> I know, right? It's like, <gasps> it's like during that mammogram yesterday, I had to hold my breath. I was like, you people better hurry it up. I can't hold my breath all day. <laughs> That's funny, Gina. Was holding your breath, or you were uh, turning it. I got breath on my mind. Gosh, y'all, get this. I don't know if y'all have done the math, Hey, Emma. If Jane, in this instance, I really want it to flow nicely so I don't have to fight it. And if it's a little bit thick and you want it to be like anytime I'm doing a uh, like lettering or when I want thin lines like in our evergreen bows yesterday, um, you're, if your paint is really thick, just start adding a little bit of water to it till it gets to like an inky consistency. And mostly I only do that for if I'm lettering, doing something like this, I want it to be thin. Or if I'm doing something that has thin lines, just like those needles in our evergreen yesterday. Under normal circumstances, I wouldn't do that. Almost done. Almost there. Yeah, I educated him all right. <laughs> Almost there, guys. When we get done tonight, too, I will post a picture of this immediately so that you can see it the right way. And I also, somebody needs to remind me as we log off to try and figure out why I can't flip my phone so that you can read the words properly. Hey, Kelly, glad you made it. So this says Mary. <laughs> I know it's backwards, but the inner, the uh, Facebook wouldn't let me flip it. So this is Mary, and I have a line all the way around for my circle. I used a plate to make my circle. This is a 10 by 10 canvas. And I need a little fan for a minute. Woo! Well, I'll fan my paint and me at the same time. <laughs> hey, Kim. Woo! Yes, I'm so glad we're not uh, painting supercalifragilistic. Woo! La, la, la. Okay, so on our line, we want to add, hey, Sherry, I want to add a little something. Like it was grapevine-ish. So I think I'm going to use my pencil to just give myself a little leeway. So what I want is to come off of these circles. I'm going to make a little line. Actually, I think I'm going to use my pen. This is a graphic one 
archival, but it's brown and it's a one. Okay, and I will take a picture of this and put it in there. It's a brown pen, so it'll be uh, like a chocolate brown, just like a wreath would be, right? Don't mix up your plates. That would be bad if I just slung paint all over myself. So I am going to do, start with my pen, and then I'll thicken it up with my paintbrush. So I really want, I'm going to turn it this way so I can see the words. So I really want to come off of my circle with some lines like it was a um, grapevine wreath. So I'm gonna just come off a little, and then we'll come down this way. So that makes sense to you guys? So we're gonna just make some lines so it's not a perfect circle. This came from Hobby Lobby. It is a Pigma, you can't see it, but I'll take a picture of it. It's a Pigma Graphic One Archival, and it's brown. So, let me see. I'll just do another little line. Don't try to make them perfect because no branch is perfect. <laughs> Rima, are you saying no? It didn't make any sense. So, let's see here. So, this is kind of like a really scrawny, sad little grapevine wreath. <laughs> and we're gonna add some punch to it, I promise. We'll come up this way with one, cause they don't all go in the same direction. Okay, remember that. They're not all gonna go in the same direction, so I am just going to Do you guys want me to trace this wreath for you too, or just the words? I can do the wreath too. For your tracer, I mean. Voila, look at that. So just kind of look at a grapevine wreath and get some ideas. That looks pretty good. Hey D, what's up chicken butt? Okay, I'll do the wreath too. So, now that I have this, I really want to fatten it up a little bit. I'm not going to give it a whole lot of fatness, but I am going to... Okay, gotcha. I'll do the wreath too. Uh, I am going to... This is the raw umber, the Americana raw umber, and see how loose it is? See how it runs? I add en enough water to that to make it a little bit runny so that I could make skinny lines. So I am just gonna go around, trying to see what's still wet. That's wet right there. I'm just gonna go around my reef. Reef. Do you do your Facebook Live through Facebook pages? I do, Jane. Lord, it's just a play. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna fatten up my lines that I just made with my pen with a little bit of that raw umber. See how m different that looks now? It kind of gives it a little substance. So I'm gonna go around, I'm gonna add a little paint, and I'm just gonna go all the way around and add in some thickness. And remember, don't make them perfect. You don't want them to be all the same size. You don't want them to be all the same thickness. How much, <laughs> right, Keitha? Wouldn't that be something? And I'm gonna twist my brush as I go too so that I don't have perfect lines. See what I'm doing there? Just fatten it up so it looks like a wreath. And don't stress over this, guys. This part is supposed to be the easy part. And the jankier they are, the better. Hey, cat. How are you, love? So I'm just making some little branches.
Now my hands are getting shaky. Just because I said they weren't. So I have to be quiet when I do this too. <laughs> Yes, that's so you that helps you avoid having a perfectly straight line because some of us naturally want our lines to be perfectly straight. You know, that's just our natural tendency to be out, you know, to try to make things, you know, just right, perfect. And so it's impossible to make a perfect line if you're rolling your brush between your fingers. Yeah, I tried that, Jane. I did the magic wand, and then I did the little window, because you can flip it upside down, and you can flip it to the left or the right. And I tried that. I, I think there may be a setting on my new phone that I haven't found yet that maybe keeps you from doing that, you know? I don't know for sure. I'm just guessing, because I've almost always been able to do that. Because remember last time when the th when the screen was jiggle, 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 jiggling? It was because I had flipped the screen? I don't know. I'm going to have to blame the country internet. <laughs> Thank you, Chris Beth. I'm going to assume that's Beth. So I, I know how to do it. I just don't know why it's not working. I'm going to get my brush down. It's also, just so you know, easier to do that twisty, rolly thing if your hand is closer to the end than it is here. It's kind of hard to do it this way. It's easier the higher you up are up on your brush. FYI. It is the brand new iPhone, the 11. I splurged because I haven't had a new phone since the iPhone 5 came out. <laughs> so I was like, yep, I'm getting it. Of course, it's that payment plan too. Freaking Verizon. Getting all my money every month. So we're almost done. Thank you for your patience. I know sometimes it can get like, oh, this is taking forever. It is sideways. Yeah, I don't know what the deal is. I'm doing it just like I always do. Phone is horizontal. I did all the things. I just have to assume there's some setting maybe that I don't know about that is causing me problems. I am, yeah, right? Uh, I am gonna figure it out though. I'm going to figure it out. Because it's annoying when you can't really, when you're looking at something and you can't really even see what the verbiage is, what the words are. Trust me, I have watched people do lives where their lives were backwards, and it's like, ugh. <laughs> oh, this guy, see? See, Colette? <laughs> Somebody tell Colette what the squiggly red line is. I'll show you in just a second, Colette. My phone will not flip, so it is the word Mary, but it looks backwards to you because my stupid phone won't flip. We've had a 20-minute conversation about that. <laughs> See? It's annoying as crap. Okay, check it. So look, Colette, this is what it is. Where's my Mary? This is... 
This is what it says. <laughs> But it's backwards on the screen because my phone will not allow me to flip. See, I'm still trying. It won't flip. So it says Mary, but it looks crazy to you because it's backwards. I'm going to take a picture when I'm done so you'll know exactly what it looks like. So that is all the painting we have to do, except I think I'm going to take a little bit of white and put a tiny bit on my palette. And I'm gonna take a tiny, teeny, weeny, weeny, weeny little uh, liner brush, just something really small. See how tiny that is? Just that tiny little bit. I'm gonna wet my brush. Yeah, it's hard to make out when it's backwards. Trust me, we know, it's terrible. So I'm just gonna get a tiny little bit of white on my brush and I am going, I am gonna hit just a few spots in this word just to highlight, just to give the word Mary a little bit of depth. Y'all know I don't like solid color. So that's about it. Just adding a little bit of white so you can see. See how I added the white? It's upside down and backwards. So that the, um, oh, look what I did. I gotta add a new branch now. <laughs> Hang on. That gummit. I smeared it. It was still wet. Got to add a new branch. We'll put a leaf there. We'll put a leaf there. <laughs> How about that? Okay. So the brown is still wet. But this is what it looks like. And we've used the raw umber to make a kind of a grapevine-ish looking uh, wreath. So... I'm going to take a picture of this uh, the right way once it is once it is done. So let me, I'm going to fan this and me a little, see if we can get it dry. And then we're going to start adding these. These wonderful green niblets that we've used a couple of times. We've used them in our Christmas trees and in our um, French tree. So what I've done is just taken a piece of sheet glass and used my wheeled nippers to break off a bunch of just shapes. And all you gotta do is just squeeze them on your glass and that's the shape it makes. Yeah, it's almost dry. It's just one little spot. So it's right here, so I'm gonna put something there. I'm gonna put that there, and then we'll just start going around in a circle. So here's what I'm gonna do. My Mary is nice and dry, no problems there. So I am going to just pile some of my greens in the center. <laughs> Look at that one, that's an odd bird. And I'm gonna get my little stone because I don't want anybody stabbing theirself. And I'm gonna hit just those tips and I'm gonna start adding just some greenery around the wreath. Make sense? So I'll just do that there. We'll do this one's big, so I think we'll do that one here. So I am just going to start laying in some pieces. 
trying to micromanage it and look and make sure I do it the way I want to. So we'll add, here's what I'm gonna do. As I go, I'm gonna lay in, I'm gonna use my glue, and what I'm using for berries is this string of red beads. This came from Hobby Lobby. I always buy these on half price. It was $3.99 regular price, so I got them for two bucks, this whole strand of beads. So I'm gonna break them open, and we're gonna use some of these beads as our um, berries. So I'm gonna just put a dab of glue. I'm gonna put one berry right there. And we'll just work it as we go. So I'm gonna put a blob of glue there. Then we'll add, I like to make sure the holes in the beads are uh, horizontal so you don't actually see it. So look there. That's cute. Can you see that? That's how we're gonna start. So now we'll just keep going. Get us a little skinny one right here. And we're just gonna keep working it. Keep on keeping on. See, I like these long, skinny ones. Oops. Yeah, I just Inga, I just make like a whole bunch at once. You know, I just do like if I have a sheet that's like a portion of a sheet, I'll just take my wheeled nippers and just nip the whole sheet so I don't have to think about it again for a while. I think I'll put a bead right there. Maybe, maybe right there. Take up that space. Put one of the little cherry beads right there. And I think I'm gonna put a bead or three right here. <laughs> and I'm using three different colors of greenery, um, green stuff. Does that make sense? The glass. Not using all one color. I got like three different colors of green. I have a, a real opaque green, which is this. It's not see-through, it's opaque. Then I have one that's translucent, which you can see through. Then I have this apple green as well. So I'm using three different, three different, uh, Three different colors of green. So let me see if I can find a baby one. This is gonna be super, super cute. I can feel it already. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and still got my little greenies. Oh, I need a Really long, skinny one for that. There's one. Right there. And it's called a honing stone or a glass grinding stone. I do not sell the uh, Niblets, Kelly, but you can make them yourself so cheap. There is a uh, video in both boot camp and in the Shattered Circle on how to make these little nibbles. They're so easy. I would not have the nerve to charge you to make them. They're so, so stinking easy. Okay, so let me see. I'm just going to go here. And the stone, you can find, that one's a bad one. The stone is in uh, the resources. Uh, there's an Amazon link that has all my favorite things, and you can find the stone there. Um, I'm just keeping on, keeping on. 
You mean do the tips? Yes. I'm doing the tips so they don't cut anybody because they're really sharp. And if somebody rubs their hand across it, it could cut them. Mostly because that point is really sharp. So I'm going to do a bead here. You can see that it only takes just, you know, a, a millisecond really to uh, do that as we go. So I'm gonna add here, here. I'm gonna do another one right there. So we have a little triple threat going on. Uh, so I'm just doing the points on each end, on each end. The berries are just glass beads, a string of beads from Hobby Lobby. It's look in the jewelry section and it's just a little stringer of red beads. I need a skinny, skinny one. There's a nice green. So I'm just continuing on with my greenery. Yes, I am. <laughs> I'm going to do another single one. I may add two more up here, too. So, let's see. Really need a long, skinny one. I know I got one somewhere. Well, here's one. There's that. See, these are kind of curved. They have a little curve to them. I think I'll put a single berry there since I have an odd-shaped little tip. Then up here where it's crazy, we'll do three. Let me do a little baby. Then when I get all this crap out of the middle, you'll definitely be able to tell better what is going on in this land. Okay, Mary, see you. Let's see. Actually, I love this piece, but it's too square. Do you see how it's square on the end? So I'm just gonna take my nippers and I gotta do it over here because I don't want the uh, tidbits getting in my piece. So I'm just gonna take it to a point so it's not a squared off edge. I'm gonna stick that right there. Let's see, I'm gonna start tossing a few things. That one's no good. Girl, you better finish that. What you doing? You're just too busy. You're a busy little beaver, aren't you? This little teeny baby. Let's see. I really need a really long long one. Do I have, oh look, look at this. Look at that. I know it's odd shaped, but it's going to work. Is this wreath not cute? So I think we need, hmm. trying to decide. We're gonna put three right there. I'm gonna get rid of some of this crap. I'm getting a grinder for Christmas from my mama. I know they're kind of messy, but we're gonna deal with it. All right, so I have 
one more. I'm going to add right here. And then we're going to do... Whoa! Not cool, man. We'll do a threesome. See how that works? Get out of the way, man. Oh, guys. I think we need three over here, too. That would be like this. So we're going to add that and maybe a few more little baby pieces. Wherever I see fit. Guys, this is so stinking cute. OMG, I wish you could see it the right way because it is stinking adorable. All right, let's put some more beads up here and then I think we're gonna be done. Y'all have got to do this right away. Must. Oh, look. Oh, okay, I'm going to try. I don't want anything to move, but I'm going to try to hold this up a little closer so you can see it. I know it's upside down and backwards, but look how cute. I'm going to take a super close up picture once I'm done. And then when I get off here, I'm going to get some wine and try to figure out why my thing is backwards. Lord. Okay. So, guess what? This is pretty much done, except for I see, I see a little piece of uh, where I traced my tracer right there. So, I'm going to get my teeny, teeny little baby brush in just a teeny, teeny bit of red. And I am going to try to fix that. I don't want that showing. There. Easy as pie. Oh my goodness. Dudes. Dudes. <laughs> okay, let me clear off so we can resin, because we're gonna resin this. We're gonna resin this piece and we're gonna resin our little evergreen ornament. Let me get all this garbage out the way. All the things clouding up my space. So I need to keep out the raw umber, the white and the green and our red. And that's all the colors we used. Okay. And the glue that goes on my list. Oh my goodness, guys. This, I, mark my words. This will be sold so fast. It'll make our head spin. So I'm gonna grab my risers. And we're gonna get, dude. <laughs> we're gonna get, I never say that. I don't know where that came from. It just came. So I'm gonna just tuck my little risers up under because we're gonna do this one first and then we'll do our, um, ornament thingy. So we'll tuck that under. Hopefully we are level. I don't know if I can fit my level in. Let's see. Uh, it's close enough. Close enough. So now we're going to get started with the fun parts. Okay, so I am only going to mix um, Oh gosh, I'm not gonna need much at all. I'm gonna mix, not in this cup, cause that's too much. I'm gonna mix two ounces of resin because I think this is gonna take maybe an ounce and a half. And I think that the other one is gonna take a half ounce. So I am gonna, I'm gonna push it to the limit and see
So I'm gonna mix two ounces. Let's see if how good I am. So I'm gonna mix two ounces of resin and y'all can come down here and smack me if it's wrong. So I'm gonna just get my gloves on. Y'all think I can do it with two ounces? I'm feeling brave, <laughs> feeling brave. Oh, G's timing me? Okay. I'm going to push it, Philip. Two ounces. Okay, we're going to put... Y'all know I use Art Resin exclusively. I'm going to show you the package. Just because I use Art Resin exclusively. It's a 50-50 mixture. You mix 50% part A, 50% part B. Mix for three minutes. We'll talk about it as we go, but I am working with these gigantuum bottles, so I am just going to kind of do this over to the side. Yes, you can pour more resin once it dries, absolutely. So I'm going to pour one ounce of part A, which is the hardener, and it doesn't matter which one you start with with this, with this particular brand. If you're new, do not pour in one cup. If you're new to resin, you're going to pour part A in one cup, part B in the second cup, and mix the two together. That way, if you get a little off on your measurements, then it, you can correct your mistake. See, I got off on my measurement. I'm in one cup, but this is how good I am. I'm going to mix my, make my, fix my mistake with my eyeballs. All right. So that was part A, one ounce, part B, one ounce. I actually went a little bit over, so I went a little bit over with the other, and that's why you do it in two cups, because I had to just kind of guesstimate how much I needed of part B. So you do it in two cups if this is your first, second, third, fifth time. Uh, Peggy, you can get Art Resin at artresin.com or on Amazon. So now I get to mix for three minutes. So let me do this because she's bossier. Oh my goodness, how can she be bossier? Okay, yes, artresin.com or Amazon. So we're gonna stir for three minutes Let's go. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Thanks, I wasn't sure if I posted it or not. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna start with all my little, my little glass bits first because we wanna make sure we cover all of that and then it's gonna, the resin's gonna level out and spread all around the rest of our canvas and that's gonna help us minimize how much resin we use on our canvas and minimize it rolling over the edges because that's not, we don't want that. Okay, the stirring. Okay, did I cheat? Did I cheat? Okay, so I'm gonna start just in one particular area and I'm gonna make sure all of my little glass bits are covered three times. <laughs> Y'all are hard on a girl. <laughs> it's hard to talk and stir. So I am making sure I cover all of my beads really well and cover all of my little glass bits, especially those tips. You know how I sanded them with my little honing stone? You still, oh, there's hair, there's hair, there's a hair. You still wanna make sure you get those covered really nicely with the resin. Just extra insurance so they don't poke anybody. So I'm going to go around the wreath, round and round. I hear my kitty cat fussing at me. Janet, you know what? If we need to, I think you are not alone. Uh, and I will tell you this, and this is the honest to God's truth. It took me a full year before I could cut the strips that I use for my crosses. It took me a full year before I could cut those strips without breaking 90% of them. And so just give yourself some grace 
and keep practicing because that's what it takes. Use the ones that break too. Nobody cares. Use the ones that break and just give yourself some grace on cutting those because Honest Engine, it took me a year at least to be able to cut those strips without breaking most of them. So don't think somebody just started cutting them and was magically perfect. It takes practice. But we will address that and maybe do a live uh, talking about, uh, you know, ways to, um, um, you know, help you with the strips. So we'll do that. Not right now. Soonly. So I'm just continuing to cover my glass. Make sure it's all done. Your nippers are broken. Get you some new nippers, girl. Use your Hobby Lobby coupon. Or you may just need new blades. I have to replace my blades sometimes. Almost there. Yes, yes. And you can watch my videos. You can also go to YouTube. They have lots of videos and, with hints and tips and tricks on cutting strips and shapes. That's how I learned, honest to God. That's how I learned watching videos and just practicing, doing it over and over and over and being so mad. And uh, you can get them on uh, YouTube or YouTube on um eBay or they don't sell them in Hobby Lobby, but you can get them on eBay um, or even Amazon if you're an Amazon girl like me. But yeah, I used to throw a fit, man. It would make me so mad because the longer I can't do something, the more I'm determined that I'm going to do it. So it's like the minute I can't or, you know, I feel like I can or somebody tells me I can't, then I'm like a psycho. I'm like, I'm going to do it. <laughs> so now I'm going to put a little bit in my center. And that piece took an ounce. One ounce, so I still have an ounce left to do the other piece, which is not gonna take that much. So now I'm just gonna use my hands and I'm going to spread my resin around to the edges of my canvas with my gloved hand. You can use a brush if you want. I don't use a brush because it tends to leave uh, brush hairs and debris in the resin, which then you have to worry about getting that crap out. And you also have to toss the brush. And I like to save dollars. So I just use my hands. It's a little more controllable. So I'm just gonna move it around. I've got way too much resin on this piece. I was trying to get all my Nips covered really well, and I ended up with way too much resin, guys. But the good news is I won't have any naked spots. No naked spots here. This is so cute. So I'm just going to continue. Make sure it's all covered well. Make sure your nips are covered, the little green uh, leafy pieces. Just spread, spread, spread. Yeah, in the boot camp, we teach you all the things. We leave nothing to be guessed at. We do a weekly live in the group to release the next video and answer any questions you may have. It is awesome, awesome, awesome. If your uh, loved one you think would love to take the course, how about giving that little sweet gift to them for Christmas? Okay, I think I'm covered. I'm gonna just look at it one more time. Yes, you did, Miss Janet. I'm just gonna take a look with my, see, I missed a spot right there. 
cover that. I'm just gonna take a look. Never just walk away at this point. You, obviously, you gotta torch it or heat it up, but you always want to just give it a second look and make sure, look at it from an angle, let the light hit across it at a different angle and make sure all your bits are covered. But I'm gonna tell you, like I told all the people inside my membership group this week, you're never going to create a perfect piece of glass art using your resin. It's just not gonna happen. There are too many factors involved like dust, debris, you know, if your house is 1,000% dust free, then good on you because I don't know anybody else's who is, whose is. So you're always gonna have some tiny bubbles or some just some tiny little non-visible but dust particles. It's not like you can see the dust. You see just see maybe a little hump in your resin. Nothing is gonna be perfect. Nothing. Okay, so. I use way too much resin. I guarantee you, you could do this with less than an ounce of resin because I've got way too much resin floating on my piece. Now, I'm gonna take my gloves off and we're gonna give a little torching. Too cute. And guys, remember what we talked about earlier about blessing the page? If you bless, AKA sprinkle the page, uh, we're going to put all the names. Let me know you did it. We're going to put all the names in a hat. And then somebody is going to win this piece come Saturday. We're going to draw a name. And we're going to ship you our ornament piece on Saturday. Or we're going to draw a name on Saturday. We're not shipping until Monday. So I'm going to use my torch. You can use a heat gun. You can use a blow dryer. But you're going to have to uh, keep that uh, setting, the air setting on low and the heat on high. And don't be pushing your glass around. So be careful with the blow dryer. Or you can use a little creme brulee kitchen torch. Or if you're brave like me, you can go crazy with a big massive torch. So I am going to fire up my torch and I'm just gonna pop those bubbles. I'm gonna give you the same reminder I remind you of every time and that is what? Do not let the flame from the torch touch your resin. It will burn it. It is the heat that pops the bubbles, not the fire. So keep that fire off of your piece and keep your hand moving, your heat source at all times, never stop and focus the heat source on one area. You see how my hand is just moving at all times? I haven't stopped. I'm just moving, 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 left, right, left, right, left, right. Boom, 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 done. Turn your torch off. Do not touch anybody with the tip. Unless you want them to hit you. And that's it. Done. Boom shakalaka. I see with my little eye a little piece of fuzz right here. So this is just a skewer. You could use a, to a toothpick or whatever. So I'm just going to go in and voila, fuzz ball. Pull it out. Yay, B. Well, you know, better late than never. So I don't see any other little debris or fuzzies set maybe right here. I'm not even worried about this because there's so much texture in this that I wouldn't be able to see a piece of debris if it was poking me in the eye. So that is it.